Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to revisit my earlier series on cal calculus with parametric curves and now look at example one, which goes over this involute. I believe that's how it's pronounced. If you think it's otherwise, please comment below and go over the formula for that. I'll describe that in a bit. And let's just jump right in. Yeah, now the formula that I'll be describing here will be used in my next video on a different example. So stay tuned for that. So the example states, a string is wound around a circle and then unwound while being held taut. This is just uh, tight. Yeah, held uh, taut or pulled, uh, let's write tight here. That's just pretty much what it means and it's over here. Yes, yeah, so you have a string around the circle across like that, and and then uh, it's unwound, but it's held tout. So that's the tout right there. So as as you unwind it, you have this curve there. So the curve traced by the point P at the end of the string is called the involute of the circle, and this is the involute right there. And yeah, so that's the curve as you are. Uh, basically unwinding it, it's going to go all the way around, etc. It goes all the way across like that. And now uh, we're asked if the circle has radius R and center O, so that's the O, there's a radius, and the initial position of P is right here at R0, and if the per parameter theta is chosen as in the figure uh, below right here, show that the parametric equations of, of the involute R and those are right here. Yeah, and these are the formulas for this point on the envelope right here. This is x, y, those are the coordinates. And the coordinates are x equals r cosine theta plus theta sine theta. And the y coordinate is y equals r sine theta minus theta cosine theta. So these are the parametric equations. And we're asked to show that they are these right over here and all circle this. Yes, so in showing this, well, what we can notice here, what we're going to be doing is just dealing with some trigonometry. We're just going to have to split this up like that and then deal with some other triangles like that. And that's pretty much, you know, as it looks like what we'll have to do. So let's go and draw this again over here. I'll draw this, actually draw the uh, x and y coordinates like this, y and x. I'm going to draw a circle like that. Yeah, so now let's say we have our angle across like that. So we have this all the way straight like that. And so I'll draw this a bit higher like this. Let's draw a better line. So like that. And now because we're holding it tout or straight, we get a straight line. This is in fact tangent. So you could actually, if you were to extend this past, this is perfectly tangent across. So if it's tangent, we have just a 90 degrees like that yeah, from the circle. If, if, for example, if it started off at here, we'll have a perfectly like tangent line like, like that. That's just perpendicular to this center there. Yeah, so it's important to understand that 90 uh, degree angle there. So now we have theta here. This is r. And then what we could do is split this part up into triangles. I'm going to get into a triangle like that. And now we have the curve here. This is that curve of the uh, involute like that. And this is our point P like that. And this one has, again, coordinates x and y. And that coordinate here is the x over here. So we want to find out what the x coordinate is as well as the yeah, y coordinate, which is somewhere over here. So what we can do is notice this. This is a straight line like that. So for, yeah, first of all, I'm just going to go recall. So recall for a triangle. Yeah, for a triangle like this, this is, let's say, theta. This is uh, A, B, C. Yeah, I just moved it over here, actually. So if we have like that, then we know that the sine theta, by definition, is just uh, opposite over hypotenuse b over c and the cosine is is just going to be uh, adjacent over hypotenuse a over c so that means that if you just rearrange this the a equals to c times cosine theta and the sine of it I'm just going to move this over here 
This one B is equal to, just move the C over C, sine theta, like that, just for reference. I'm just going to circle this in a bubble like that. So that I'll just recall that so that we can just write this directly as right here. The hypotenuse is R. So R times cosine theta. And then the vertical component, that's just R sine theta. Yeah, so we have the coordinates or the vertical and horizontal components up to this point here. So what we need next is if we draw a straight line like this, or just a, a horizontal line across like that. Yeah, I just fixed up that line, make it a bit straighter. So we have something like that. Then we could draw another triangle here, a straight line like that. We have now a right angle there. Now we need to know what this angle is as well as this length. Well, we can know this angle because if we just draw this directly through it like that, this is exactly a horizontal line and this is just a straight line across, I'm just going to draw a parallel like that, so it's just, just exactly the same. So then we could draw this angle, that's just theta. And since this is a straight line across, it's 90 degrees, this means that this is basically the difference here. This is just pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, minus theta. Yeah, because this whole thing like that is 90 degrees. And pi over 2 in radians is just 90 degrees in degrees. And now we need to know this length right here. Well, we know that length because if you recall the arc length, I'll write arc length formula. Yeah, we have, if you have something like this, this is an arc of a circle here. If this is theta, like that, and this is our A, this is our length R. This distance right here, this is equals to, by definition, R theta in radians. And if you can learn more, I'll put a video description and uh, yeah, put a link in the video description below to learn more about that. So now we have this. This length is from here all the way across here. Yeah, since the string is on this side, all we're doing is expanding it. I'll just move this away. So all we're doing is basically uh, just lengthening it straight like that. So that means that this length is basically the same as this arc length, and that's the same there. So in other words, and I'll put this in another one bubble like that. So in other words, this length, this is going to be r times by this theta, that's the arc, and then this is the same thing over here. This is r theta, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So now we can get to this coordinate, and then we just have to, then we can go over to here by getting these components. And we know that that's the angle across there. So then the vertical side is going to be the sine. So R, uh, this is actually going to be that angle. Yeah, so R theta as a hypotenuse times it by, because we're doing the sine. This is going to be, yeah, that's opposite over hypotenuse. This is going to be sine of the angle pi over 2 minus theta. And now this part right here, this horizontal component, that's going to be you know, the cosine of it. So we type the, uh, or write the uh, hypotenuse r theta times it by now cosine of this angle, which is just pi over 2 minus theta, like that. Yeah, so now we could get our x and y components, because now we know this part. So we had to get the x1, all we do is add from here to here, and then this part all the way to there to there. So, and we know those values. Those are just r cosine theta and r theta cosine theta minus theta. So what we have is, so thus, yeah, x equals to the horizontal component of both of uh, the triangles. So r cosine theta. And then we add it to this one here, which is r theta, yeah, r theta, cosine, now we have theta minus over 2 minus theta like that. Now to simplify this, we could remove this or just find a trig identity to remove this pi over 2. So what we'll do is recall, so recall another one uh, triangle like this, just put it here. If, if we have a triangle like this, where this is a right angle, this one here is theta. Now this triangle, if we just draw another line across, this angle is going to be, well, pi over 2 minus theta. So if we have, let's say we have A, B, and C, this length is A, this length is 
is B as well on that side. So if we looked at the cosine theta, so we have actually cosine uh, pi over 2 minus theta, that's over here. The cosine is going to be adjacent as B, hypotenuse is C. So cosine pi over 2 minus theta uh, equals to B, because we're looking at this top triangle, B over C. But this just equals to oh, B over C. That's just the sine of the theta. So that just equals to sine uh, theta. <laughs> So yeah, that is a, let's move this over here. Yeah, so that's a, an identity we have right there. So that means what we can do is, yeah, we could simplify this over here and write x equals to r cosine theta plus r theta times it by, now this is just sine theta, like that. So in other words, we could uh, simplify this further and this equals to uh, this one, take the r out. So we have r cosine theta plus r, yeah, the r is gone, theta sine theta, like that. And this is exactly what we were asked to find for the x component. And that's right here, r cosine theta plus theta sine theta. So that's what we have there. r cosine theta plus theta sine theta. So that's correct right there. So now let's find the y component. So the y component it requires adding this one here. So we get all the way up across here. And then we have to subtract this one across there. So we take this one r sine theta. Then we subtract this component because it's uh, the y component is, is over here. So we subtract this r theta sine theta minus theta over 2 minus theta. So pretty much exactly the same thing here, but we're subtracting and we're dealing with sine. So we have r sine theta minus r theta sine pi over 2 minus theta, like that. And now this pi over 2 theta, we could use this identity right here. Uh, well, we could just deal with that one here. If we look at the sine of this one, sine pi over 2 minus theta, that equals to opposite, which is A, over hypotenuse, which is C. So this equals to A over C, like that. Now that's A over C, that's adjacent over hypotenuse for this triangle, which is going to be the cosine of theta, like that. So we have that identity there, so we could just write this as, yeah, this equals to, just simplifies R sine theta, minus r theta cosine theta. Then take out the r, we get r sine theta minus theta cosine theta, and this is in fact the exact same one as above, and there's our proof. That's r, yeah, sine theta minus theta cosine theta, and this one's cosine theta plus theta sine theta, and we just switch those around, and you can see that right over here. So r sine theta minus theta cosine theta. Notice the difference here, r cosine plus theta sine theta. So yeah, that's all for today. Hopefully you enjoyed and followed through this. It's basically adding components of triangles and finding out what the correct angles are. So the, these parametric equations I'll use in my next video. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, video on the ne the next one. So, anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned. Like always, you can down down all these exact notes and the link below, as well as I'll be uploading these notes on Steemit. Yeah, shortly after I upload this video. So yeah, check it out there. These exact notes in article format. Anyway, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for another math easy solution.